أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به عز وجل جل أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وآل آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أيها المسلمون <تصفيق> That is, I seek refuge on Allah from Satan, the rejected enemy, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all systems of knowledge. We ask his help, we seek his protection, we believe in him, we put our complete trust in him, mighty and sublime is he. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, he has no partners, no associates. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and peace be upon him, is a servant and his messenger. Prayers and peace be upon him and upon his descendants, his companions, the righteous all. And upon you, O Muslim brothers and sisters, be peace and what follows after this excellent salutation. Dear people, assalamu alaikum. As I'm indeed honored and, and happy to be here in Houston, Texas, uh, being a part of this wonderful celebration. This is the second time I've been to Texas. The first time I came, some years ago, we went to, we were in Dallas at the Craig Walk. You all remember the Craig Walk? <laughs> and it was hot. <laughs> and at that time, the imam who was, who was uh, actually leading that, I don't know if imam Wathad D. Muhammad was there, was well, imam Qasim Akhli. He, he was the imam at the Dallas Masjid of Al-Islam, uh, uh, where imam Yahya Abdullah succeeded him. And here I'm back again, here in 2010, in Texas again, warm again. <laughs> but a wonderful, wonderful occasion. And I want to say um, to you, um, uh, Brother Imam Waza Ali, that on behalf of Masjid Ashid in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm bringing you all greetings. This is, a, I, 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 you know, to come to an occasion like this, I believe, is, is something that's very, very inspiring for me. You know, I heard some people talk about um, competing, and that's good in El Islam. Healthy competition, not the jealous, envious, crab in the barrel trying to tear each other down competition. And, you know, I know some of you probably have heard people who are really down and out now. Their spirits are down, they're just beaten down. Yeah. I talked to them on the telephone, well, what are we going to do? The imam is gone. We need leadership. In fact, I happened to accidentally uh, listen to a blog of some people who was talking about a W.D. Muhammad leadership initiative. I know maybe some of you have heard of it. And I heard one person say, said, they're saying that leadership is local. What they're saying is that they want to die. And I'm going to fight this with every fiber in my body. I'm listening to this fellow. And they talked as if no progress was being made in our community. Now, I responded about two weeks ago. I think if you read the Muslim Journal, there was an article in the Muslim Journal. The article is entitled, Masjid, Masjid Ashahi's clarification, Statement of Clarification about a program that was, that's planned there in Charlotte that we really don't have anything to do with. We have nothing to do. None of the imams who are there, we have two other masjids there that, that are in the association of masjids supporting the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad, Imam um, uh, Masjid Al-Razak and Masjid Ali Shah. I talked to them, they said, I don't know, we don't know anything about this program. I talked to her and I said, well, I don't know anything about this program. Now, who's coming to this city where you have people who are supporting the Mount W. Muhammad planning a leadership conference? Well, we've heard some names and I don't want to toss any names around now because we want, we want proof. <laughs> However, that's an example of what idleness and useless talk does to the psyche. They can't see the progress in Houston. They can't see the progress that's being made uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And we, we've been competing with Atlanta. We're way behind, but we're trying to catch up. 
They can't even see the progress that's being made in an old area that I came from. I came from Baltimore, I was in Baltimore, and also Philadelphia is coming alive again. Anybody who's been to Philadelphia know that they're making some progress, and I'm happy to hear that. What we're seeing is a repeat of history. Those companions of our prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him, who were so shocked upon his death, they went on to build a community of Islam. A community. In fact, one of the, the CBS, I think it was on the CBS, uh, uh, it was on the PBS, they, they, talk, they called it an empire faith. A, 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 a community that's, that's so powerful until it brought the whole world out of the depths of the, the dark ages into light. So we're seeing a repeat of that. The Imam is not here physically, but he's with us in the body of knowledge that he left. And this is why we are witnessing this kind of progress now. Imam Wazir Ali, great student. Imam Qasim Ahmed and all of the, you know, Texas, we've always looked at Texas. Everybody where I'm coming from, they said, you know, Texas, that's the R.B. estate. <laughs> You got all those brothers reading Quran and Arabic and all these students from long distance studying all of the information that's going out. We are all in a race, aren't we? And does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, he said, Walikuli wajshatun hu wa muwalihah, fastabi kul khara. To each is a destiny, a goal to which Allah turns them. Well, not everybody's going to be an Imam Wazir Ali. Not everybody's going to occupy the same type of role in terms of providing leadership. Lead there's leadership and there's the leader, right? And anyone who has sat in sure know that sometimes when you're in that circle, the, leaders, the, the leadership that's being provided for that particular, uh, that particular uh, uh, um, subject that you may be um, discussing may not be coming from the amount. It may be coming from somebody else that has expertise in there. And this is what you need when you're trying to build something like this. No, not everybody would do the same job. But then Allah brings us together. Festabikulkhaira, then strive together as if you were in a competitive race towards all that's good. He starts out by focusing our attention on our individual gifts. Then he said, bring those gifts together. And when you bring the gifts together, then you can have this kind of community effort. So I say to Imam Wazir Ali and all of those of us who are involved in not just building the masjid, Imam Yaki very eloquently gave that scenario last night. It's not only just building this masjid, it's also building the soul. It's because we know that bricks is not the only thing that we need to have a good foundation for a community. There are many beautiful masjids, and guess what? There's nobody in them. That's why our brothers, the, what they call the Tablika Jumat, they come by sometimes. Brother, can I talk to you? Bunya Ali, Salam Ali Khams. I said, wait a minute, we got that lesson a long time ago. <laughs> I'm not criticizing them, but they're, what they're trying to do is bring people back to the masjid to pray. And I have to admit, one time in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, when I was in school, I was just coming out on Friday to do Juma, and I show up sometime at Tallinn, and I was in school. I thought, I said, I can't do all of this. They came back. They came by there and spent a couple of days in that area, and before you knew it, I knew that I could do it all. I came back. So they, they do some good, so I don't criticize and try to put people down. But we are competing together. Charlotte, North Carolina. Imam Wazir, I know that people are going to be in here. They're already here, aren't they? You're going to have to have a bigger place. <laughs> now, some people are going to come they're going to, because they want to work. They want to be a part of it. Some people come because they like new things. And Imam Muhammad was telling us for years that we needed to get out of the side, the, the little old uh, storefronts for years. As a matter of fact, we weren't moving fast enough in Charlotte. One brother, you know, he, he had a few issues. He, you know, he's not around no more. Allah, he returned to Allah. 
but he heard the imam, I believe it was in uh, Georgia. Um, but anyway, the, 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 imam, the imam said that we needed to get out of what he called chicken coops. <laughs> and our place looked almost like a chicken coop. <laughs> So he came back. Now he didn't give me a time to say we were trying to work our way out of that situation because he knew. He came back and right before I went to Hodge, this brother was telling everybody, said, you know Imam Khalil ain't following the Imam. I said, what? Look at this chicken coop that we had. <laughs> yeah. So I had to call him in my office. I said, man, come here. <laughs> I'm going to Hodge, I'm asking everybody, look, have I done anything to you? <laughs> I want to make sure that my conscience is clear, you know, if I did you wrong, you know, uh, do you want me to pray for you? <laughs> and he's telling everybody that, I'm, that I got them in a chicken coop. <laughs> but Allah blessed us to get out of that chicken coop. And those of you who have visited us, Imam Yahya, Imam Qasim, Imam Ibrahim Bacha, those of, and some of you who have been there visiting us, you know we have a new facility, Imam Furukan. We have a new facility. And we don't have any room anymore. <laughs> On Fridays, we just don't have any room. And then we have some of our brothers and we love them. They come to us, the brother, Imam. You know, uh, you're having the brothers in the classroom. Why don't you put the sisters in there? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> We're not going to, you know, it, 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 this is not the right brother. <laughs> Why don't you put the sisters? No, we're going to expand. That's the kind of righteous competition that we need. That's the kind of competition that will bring us the dignity that we need as a community. So let us strive together as if we're in a competitive race towards all that is good and then the, com the community that Imam W.D. Muhammad visualized will become more and more reality in the United States of America. Thank you very much. Assalamu Next, I would like to bring up Dr. Raza Pasha and he's going to uh, say a few comments and um, we'll continue on with the program. For this. Dr. Pasha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. It's good to be here. And thank you very much for allowing me to speak. This is a, a huge honor. I didn't expect to speak. But when I was asked by my teacher, Imam Wazir Ali, who you, you seem to all be, all be familiar with, uh, I was uh, greatly honored. So thank you. Um, I, am, I am a mere student here, so I'm not really prepared to to teach, but I, I do want to share. If that's okay, I'll share a little bit with you today. Um, I, I've actually been coming here for about nine years now. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I was watching that video. That I think they showed it last night. I, I missed the video last night, but they showed it the, the dinner before that of the history, some pictures of history. And there were a lot of them black and white pictures. And uh, I was sitting next to Marvin. Is Marvin here today? Mom? Okay. But I asked him, you know, you know I, I wanted him to just walk me through the pictures because I wasn't there. So I go, you know, so he showed me, he, he told me a little bit about the history. And he, he goes, yeah, that's me. He's like, and that's Imam Wazir. And he was like three years old at the time. And uh, he, he showed pictures of, of, the, of the mosque as it's being built and the bricks being built. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, I wasn't there. But I was there when uh, I used to drive maybe 45 minutes, an hour away, to come to this mosque for kutbas. And I used to, my friends would ask, because where are you going? We've got to go to Juma. And I go, yeah, I want to go to this, uh, this mosque. It's on Belfort. And they're like, why? And I go, I, I, you know, it's, we can just go right here. Because to come here... I'd go, and for those of you not from Houston, you can throw a rock, and you'll hear it like you'll hit a Starbucks, and you'll hit a mosque. I mean, there's a, there's there's a lot, okay. So, so for me to come here, I, I would pass one mosque, and then another mosque, and then another mosque, and then I'd have to take a ride on on Wayside, and somehow get here. I'd get lost every time. 
So that's what would take an hour. You should only take 45 minutes. But, um, so I go, why why'd you come? Why are you going there? And I go, you know what? It's, it's refreshing. And, um, and you know, that's, a, that's an interesting, interest, it, that was interesting to me. And the, to summarize the, the lessons that I learned um, in one word, in, I've been a student of Islam for a long time. I was born Muslim. And I've lived in, in many different places, and I've, I've had many, many teachers, many teachers. And um, if I can summarize in one lesson, one word about Islam, is that it's simple. Because I, I can tell you, I've had so many conversations as I grow up as, you know, whether or not I should have a beard, whether or not I should wear a kufi, uh, whether or not if my shorts were long enough. I remember, you know, we used to go, well, is it below the knee, is it above the knee? <laughs> I remember when we talked about, we, we would dissect the, the, uh, the um, ingredients of food and find out how much pork is in gelatin. And I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I couldn't eat anything. I was like, there's, I go, I mean, the, 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 the discussions and arguments of the way that I grew up learning Islam was, was, was confusing and I became very disenchanted. And when I came here, I went from being disenchanted to being enchanted. So, uh, so uh, I've decided to become a member of this community. And since then, And since then, I've attended many things. And even though I wasn't uh, wasn't there when I saw the pictures, I, I was here for the kutbas. And I remember when I went to uh, I went to uh, Chicago for Ramadan session. I was blessed to be able to see and witness the words of uh, Imam W. D. Muhammad in person. You might remember me there. But uh, when I came back, and I was go, yeah, I went and I went to Chicago. And what'd you do there? And I go, yeah, I heard W. D. Muhammad speak, and um, it was it was it was fantastic. What was it like? And it must have been grand, and you know, there must have been organs and a big stage and lights and fireworks. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, it was it was it was simple, <laughs> right? You know, I've, I've, I've opened my eyes to many different things. And I see, I see the world in a much different way. I see life lessons. I see God's signs. And I'm, I, I, I'm one of the, uh, uh, you know, another lesson is just to, to look at the, the in everyday life and, 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 and understand the symbolism and, and look at prayer and understand the symbolism and what it really means. And it's not just about movement. I mean, there's so many things that, that I grew uh, in the last nine, nine years and, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, there was an incident, and because uh, of HIPAA regulations, I'm not going to say what, exactly what happened, but you're all witness that there was an incident just right over here in which a very special brother was uh, having difficulties with heat, and uh, I would just happen to be there, and uh, one of my, my, my brothers were out there, and we grabbed this brother end, and um, we lift up, lifted up his legs, and the, the first thing, you know, he was coming in and out of consciousness, and he was, he was in bad shape, and we finally got his, his wits back, and the first thing we did is give him water. And then we called the ambulance, and then I was in the ambulance and I was thinking, I thought, man, this brother's pulse is going down, you know, he's not talking straight, he's really sick, and at that time we gave him, I go, we need to get an IV. And then we put an IV in this brother, and I'm looking and there's just water dripping down. That's all it was, it's just water. That's all the brother needed was just water. So simple. So, I mean, so unbelievably simple to me, and then from that I was watching the monitor and, uh, the heart was like around 40, it's really low. We're all, and we're looking at the EKG, I go, man, this EKG doesn't look too good. And then we, the water just dripping down, I was watching it. I was just quiet, I was just sitting, watching what's going on, and the heart rate started coming up. And the blood pressure was coming back. 
And then his brother started talking and talking and talking and talking. I was like, wow. You know who this brother is, so that's why you're all laughing. <laughs> and it just reminded me how, how simple life really is, you know. You know, so, so natural water is, it's, 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 it's a very simple element. Um, it's everywhere. You know, God reminds us so much about how simple life is just by that symbol. I mean, the, the purity of water. And, uh, you know, we, we do our voodoo, it's, it's 70% of our body is water. 70% of the world is water. You look at an elephant, it's 70% of an elephant is water. Yeah. You know, you, you, as a physician, you know, if you lose 1%, just 1% of your water in your body, you'll start feeling tired. So you're constantly reminded, God constantly reminds us that, that we need water. It's so simple. And I, that, that just those that lesson kind of rang in my head. I was like, "Wow!" So um, I just wanted to share that with you. That uh, that uh, it's it's great to be here. It's 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 a great to be part of this community. I I I, I love it. I enjoy being here. I, I'm I'm so uh, thankful that I have a mom was here as my um, excuse me. I didn't expect that. <laughs> but um, it's just, just, it's been tremendous. So. Well, I'll leave with that and uh, I'm going to grab myself a glass of water. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Posh, for sharing that. Who we have next? Um, who's here? Some people listen. So next we'll bring up uh, Imam Furqan Muhammad, and we'll have him give us some comments. If he would, please bless us with some comments. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Ian Biden with Allah named the merciful being in fact of the merciful redeemer. Uh, I had no idea that I would be called upon. I come to enjoy myself <laughs> and since Friday to now I truly enjoyed myself. We bring greetings from Master Gamut Manoon, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, when I heard the news of this masjid, it reminds me about a bookstore. I don't like to go into a bookstore because when I go into a bookstore, I know I'm going to see a book that I want to buy. And in many cases, it's going to be a book that I cannot afford to buy. But then again, I cannot afford not to buy it. So I know financially I didn't have the funds to come here, but at the same time I could not afford to miss this. It's called a sacrifice. And many of us have made many events, and so many events many times when you sacrifice your money, to other Muslim stars saying, see I told you, he's loaded. Got plenty of money. Uh, but it is so refreshing to be here with you and to enjoy uh, and celebrate the building of this masjid. It's a big deal. Don't let no one tell you it's a small deal. It's a big deal. I want to say that in the nation of Islam, in every major city, we had a temple, and it was called Muhammad's Temple. And then it changed to Muhammad Mosque in every major city. So it became clear who made the name Muhammad common in America. 
And we have a legacy which represent a duty to keep Imam Muhammad vision and mission alive. So I think it would be an obligation on all of us to follow in that trend of having a masjid, a center, a room, a street, or something named Imam Warkuddin Muhammad. An obligation, a duty. Uh, we had a celebration in Atlanta where we were celebrating the pioneers in Atlanta. And we mentioned in that celebration that if we don't tell our story, who's going to tell it? And if someone tell it other than us, it won't be right. It'll suffer with deficiency, something left out. So we cannot be ashamed of where we come from. And we can't be ashamed of who we are. Uh, there are major cities in every state, and then there are small cities. So small to many people don't want to tell where they come from. So they say, you know, about 20 miles outside of Birmingham, <laughs> about 15 miles outside of Houston. That's a person who's ashamed to tell where you come from. And we should not be ashamed to tell how we came to Islam. And some of us, I feel when we speak, we feel ashamed to tell how we came to Islam. Our story is remarkable. Uh, it is so remarkable, especially when you travel outside of America. It is so remarkable to many people see it close to being myth. Myth short for mythology. And we have to tell our story. And we can't be ashamed to tell how we came to where we are. And Imam Muhammad physically, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad physically is not present. But how do they live? They live through us. And as long as we have breath in our body, we should want to tell the story. Our children should be the first one to hear it. And then our grandchildren. We know traditionally in Africa, this is how knowledge was passed. Uh, your children shouldn't have to buy a book on the nation of Islam. Your children shouldn't have to buy a book on the evolution of the nation of Islam. You are that book. And we should represent the authority on those books. And, and if you into the bookstores like I am, you'll see so many people writing stories on us that was never part of the nation of Islam. And it don't take you long to arrive that they was never part of the nation. Just skim it. Just go through it and skim it right away. You see dates and everything off. It takes away credibility from the author. And then when you talk to the author, you realize, no, I just admired the nation. Everybody trying to get paid. So we have to do what the imam taught us. We have to write more books and we have to tell our story. And you can't get tired of it. I was in uh, Morocco. And it's probably about 2 in the morning, 2 a.m. And I just finished telling a group of Muslims how I came to Islam. So when I finished, you know, it's 2 in the morning. I'm ready to go to bed. Then I went on the outside and got another group. So I had to tell it again. <laughs> so we can't get tired of telling this story because this is how we live through telling this story. And like I said, uh, we have to be thankful to Allah on how he have used us. You don't tell Allah who to use and how to use them and when to use them. And I think there's a song that says, it's feeling this good being used, then use me up. 
And I'm telling you, Allah has really used us. Sometimes I don't think we realize how we've been used by Allah. And that's where the jealousy comes in many times, that other people wished Allah had to use them. You know, uh, in this uh, celebration we had in Atlanta, in honoring the pioneers, I reminded the audience how many people have chose to try to discredit our community. Starting with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, he third grader, didn't have a high school diploma, didn't have a GED. And with the ma'am, you know, uh, what university did he graduate from? What did he study overseas? They use these things to discredit us. But they don't know they give us more credibility because we have to say to the same people who are trying to discredit us, if what you say is true, then more credit should be given to us for doing so much with so little. Yes. And it's a beautiful day and all of us should be looking to long life. Nobody should be looking for short life. Long life for two reasons, number one, to repent and number two to do more good deeds and this is very motivating to go back to our city and do likewise and do greater so again I thank Allah for blessing me to be here with you this weekend to enjoy myself to go back to Atlanta rejuvenated to share the story here that many people they wanted to come for whatever reason they couldn't come so we have a duty to go back and share this event. We can't go back and be quiet. We have to go back and we have to tell it. And you know, we known for rapping. We known for rapping. And I'm encouraging every one of us to go back and rub it in. I mean, rub it in. You blow, man. You blow big down. You should have been there, man. Uh, and we have to understand that we motivate each other. Just like we came to Houston, you have to come to Atlanta. Right. We have to go to New York, wherever the good work is being done. And what color is Sally Hati? What city is Sally Hati? So wherever the good works is going on, we want to go there to support the good work, to be inclined to repeat the good work so again, my brothers and sisters, I am so honored to be here out of all the places on this earth. I believe that this is the greatest thing going on at this time is here. Allah Akbar. Sometimes we think numbers mean success. You know, wait, wasn't that many there? No, no, our success is not in numbers. Quality is over quantity. And so I begin uh, to see that this master here has a spirit. And what is spirit? What is an action without the spirit? And uh, one of the things that Imam Muhammad contributed to us is spirit. And, and there's a saying in Islam that there's not an action without spirit. Praying with no spirit. Giving with no spirit. Fasting with no spirit speaking with no spirit my brother who was at the mic earlier he mentioned about how he come here and he feel good because you listen to cook bar that's given with no spirit you know it's bad to hear a man speak and he's speaking the truth but it sound like the way he's telling he don't believe in himself <laughs> And I, I tell you, you know, some of us, uh, when we first came on Imam Muhammad leadership, we didn't know nothing but our Fatiha. But what impressed many people was when we recited it, they thought we knew more than that. That was all we knew, but we said it was so much spirit. Did you hear that? And somebody said, say some more. That, that's it. I don't know. <laughs> spirit. Say we got one group of Muslim, they have the money, and then we got the spirit. We got to get it together. To pay that spirit and that money together. 
So praise the be to Allah. I don't want anyone here from Houston to play this down. This is big. And that's probably Muslim here in Houston. They had no inclination to come here because they played it down. And we got Muslim who came from all over the United States here. And Muslim right here in Houston didn't even show up. You know, it's like that sometimes. People far off can see it. The people right up can't even see it. So I'm thankful to Allah. Soon I seen the article in the paper. I made my intention. Got to go to Houston. And so we thank Allah for you. We thank Allah for Imam Wazir Ali. And when I say Imam Wazir, I'm talking about the whole age bracket of Wazir. Uh, to see these different brothers come to the Poland and young brothers and we ask how he's 28 he's 33 you, you don't know what that do for us if we died tonight we'd be all right <laughs> you know no father want to die when his son don't see the vision his children don't see the vision because he feel when he die the vision is gone and it's a good feeling when we see so many young brothers and sisters that see the vision. And like I said, uh, commitment. And that's one thing we learned in the nation was commitment. Commitment is to death. Uh, in the last cookbook that I gave, which I gave it at the Atlanta airport, Atlanta airport has a chapel, international chapel there for those Muslims who are in transit and for those Muslims who works there at the airport. We mentioned in the cookbook that Satan is committed forever. So if you're not committed forever, you're going to lose. You have to be committed forever. Not till tomorrow. And let me say this, some of us, when we hear that word forever, we, we get scared. <laughs> but hell, you 65 years old, what is, what is forever? Three more years? Five? <laughs> hell, you getting scared for <laughs> You're 18 years old, it might be scary, but you're 67 about forever. Forever is not long. <laughs> Teeth falling out, hair falling out, hair turning gray. <laughs> so whatever few years we got left, forever. <laughs> and, and, and Satan is consistent. He said his plan is forever. And we say to the year 2015, 2018, we're not going to whip him. It has to be forever. And so I'm hoping that behind this event here that everybody will make a new commitment, a fresh commitment. You know, that's good to do many times. We don't have to wait to January 1st or the 1st of Muharram or the 1st of Ramadan. We can make a fresh commitment anytime we want to. And sometimes we do our marriage the same way. We renew the vow. We didn't get married again. We just renewed the vows. And sometimes we have to renew our shahadatain. We done got a little loose, tighten it up. And again, uh, I'm so grateful to be among true believers and true supporters. And I was with the imam, and brother kept saying, follower, follower. And the imam says, supporter is a much greater word to use. You know, the brother mentioned about following the imam to Chicago, following the man, to, that's okay. But supporter is stronger. Imam Wazir needs some supporter. I follow Imam Wazir. What, what do that mean? But supporter, I support him. That's a strong word. So alhamdulillah, may Allah continue to bless us. And I close with this short dua. Oh Allah, we seek protection in you. From a heart that has no faith. From a tongue that is not truthful. From a mind that does not remember you. From knowledge that is not useful. From a soul that is ungrateful. And from a prayer that goes unanswered, I need. And now I would like to bring up a long-standing member of this community, a teacher, educator, and has done wonderful things. As, as one of them providing the uh, lunch from Sip and Surf uh, that we've been eating on a couple of days. So with that, I would like to bring up uh, Dr. Daia Farouk. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I bear witness that there is no God but God but Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon us, who was sent to us as a mercy, and who the Quran was revealed to is his last messenger. I can't believe I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, I, all these heavyweights up in here in Wazir come asking me, do I have something to say? Because he knows that I always have something to say. I want to say that I am so grateful to Allah for this day. Um, those of us who are 60 something like the brother said, um, we're seeing our children come back into this community. And we know that has been a struggle. You know, the one that y'all enjoyed. Did y'all enjoy him last night, King? He's a mess. But um, I have, we have Eugene Farouk and I, and Eugene is feeling so much better. He might come out uh, today. I'm fixing some fresh juice cards, and I took care of him. Alhamdulillah. And gave him a painkiller. <laughs> work to do. <laughs> Allah, Allah is so merciful. Uh, this great accomplishment in our community and, and the uh, broader community is a manifestation of us being obedient to Allah. This aspiration, the seeds were, uh, were planted for this long time ago. You know how many fundraisers we've had, huh? <laughs> but then sometimes we have to pay the rent with it, pay, the, you know, light bill. And we had a lot of problems behind that because we did not have the money. So it wasn't time for this to happen. You know, we hadn't, uh, the souls were, were not in place to be able to enjoy this. You know, Allah will loan us his bounties when he's ready. Although the imams and the believers prior to this still had good intention, it wasn't because they were not deserving of this. It's that maybe the members weren't. You know, and maybe we need to be conscious of what's in our soul. Um, in this house of worship, we should be educating humanity. We need to break away from old habits. And some of us think we're going to be bored, boring, or not cool if we do not get rid of these bad habits. Let me say this to show you how powerful the logic is that we have inherited. Kaiser can tell ya, just learn enough Arabic to impress people. <laughs> but I never stopped studying the Tafsir W. D. Muhammad. See, because see, you notice all these brothers are heavy sisters. I mean, they come up here and throw down. And um, you got to do the same thing. Where are they getting this knowledge from? Mm -hmm. They got this from W. D. Muhammad because they can learn all the Arabic they want to learn. But if they don't have the right Tafsir to explain it to the people who need to be explained. Right. Right. You see me with my hand on my hip, forgive me. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to get it straight here. But, but what I want to say is that we must study and not be afraid to accept who Allah sent to us. He will forever send messages to revive when we stray. And some of us, and I, can, I admit too that the brothers did mention his name too much sometimes. And I think that's a personality thing. And then forgive them, because our brothers, a lot of them, they did not get these degrees, but look how heavy they are. You see the power of the Quran? And the reason why they think I'm heavy, my doctor's degree don't have me heavy, it's that Quran. That's my soul. See, you know, because when you get these degrees, people think, you know, they expect a lot. And uh, I just really didn't get into that world with, with my degree. I went, I tried to increase my proximity to Allah. You know, and ask Allah to bless us with the right words that would penetrate the soul. Because we're trying to 
elevate the soul. Like I was on a workshop with Kazem, say elevate the intellect with the Quran. <laughs> yes. And we cannot think that we have this physical building. And when I was driving up, it reminds me of a, a commentary that describes our prophets. A lot of God sent men were handsome, tall stature. You know, not eye candy sisters. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, you will look at an attractive person first. But, but at the same time, you must have the right content inside that package to, to, so that man or that woman mind can go right to what's right. So you must balance the external beauty with the internal beauty. Therefore, now we're looking good on the outside. We are not asking people to just come sit on the floor. And for one thing, you don't have enough money to keep sitting on this floor. <laughs> like the brother said, and brother, where's the brother that passed that head out the other day? You, you better hide. I heard you didn't give but $800. How big was that hat? <laughs> But I'm so grateful. I enjoyed your talk. And we get hype, you know? But we don't want the winds of the emotion to shake this house. <laughs> you know, we want to be intelligent. We want to, to uh, continue to be uh, inheritors of what Allah has promised us. And we cannot think just saying, as alaikum is enough. You, you must study the pattern that Allah has sent to us so we can co change our, what's in our souls. We're looking good. They, they're tying the headpieces all kind of ways now. <laughs> you know, we go on another level with those headpieces, right? <laughs> and they mean different things, too. <laughs> but I cannot stand... <laughs> Nobody wants to eat with one. <laughs> and a lot of you all are single. And you have children. And you can't wait on these men to educate these kids. And it's wrong. That's your job. Right. And we would have so many problems. We can't whine about what we don't have. I've been married 44 years, and by 15 of those, I was single. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids with the right spirit be because we both were believers. Right. And one thing I can say about Brother Farouk, if I wasn't praying, he was praying, sometimes he prayed loud to make him feel good. Y'all on the same page. But what I'm saying that to say is that we have to have this thick to And we can't be having those. We got to get emotional intelligence. We can't keep getting mad at the leadership. Because you might not know what he knows. And if you know you're not studying, you don't need to get mad at anybody. You know, because we have a job to do. It's not, all, it's not about just being here all the time, thinking you finna claim something. You have to educate yourself and have classes for these children. You have to help. In Atlanta, people still here, they got it going on. Mm -hmm. We were there visiting my daughter for nine days. It was such a blessing to see a community where your young daughters can run with young Muslims with their heads covered. Mm -hmm. and, and the seniors are sitting out in the shade in the front of the mass here. They can hang out at the mass here. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to establish here. Mm -hmm. Not just a pretty building. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then some of you brothers who retired and you still help and you can move around, 
you might need to come here and keep this place open yeah. and keep it clean. Yeah. Not, not none of you young brothers who don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. Alhamdulillah. Wait a minute. I can't believe I'm up here being this comfortable. I, I, all these brothers, and, and I'm serious, we're getting some good wisdom and knowledge. Let me tell you how I, why I love W. Hunt. I went to Malaysia with uh, my daughter for two months, three months, two months. Came back with a hundred scars, but that's not what I went there for. <laughs> um, it was for the young people. And I went to the classes. Uh, the college and I still was struggling with that area, but they, they are my old people going back to school. So I, I wasn't embarrassed. I was trying to learn, and Darina, my daughter, I can tell she was kind of embarrassed sometimes. I wasn't worried about her. I paid for that trip. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> But anyway, uh, because I couldn't get the Arabic, right? But baby, I was throwing down with W.D. Muhammad Tafsir. <laughs> Yay! Man, hold up. <laughs> I was in the class with uh, young adults and the educators there at the institution, International Islamic Institution in Malaysia. Um, we were talking about tafsir. And I said, uh, I asked the professor, I said, let me ask you something. Uh, do you think we need a new tafsir in America? And when I asked that, now you know my Arabic's all crazy, so they feel like, well, who, who's she talking about? <laughs> the young people. And I could never forget this young man. He turned around and looked at me. So he said, uh, yes, I do. I say because he said, and the brother starts speaking to him. How can you change those? You have to do the sunnah of the prophet. You cannot change the tafsir. I say, tell me what tafsir means. Say because if we're going to communicate this religion to people who have certain conditions, mm -hmm. then you have to communicate with the logic. They pass all that cross and that ignorance and that falsehood to get to the soul that's just crying out like, I'm still here, but please feed me right now. You have a soul that you have a covenant. And some of y'all forgot you forgot about the covenant. But you cannot fulfill that if you're not using the language of the Quran. You don't, I don't know Arabic. But I was walking tall in Malaysia. I was talking to W. Muhammad stuff. <laughs> you can swear I could interpret it in Arabic. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's, that's why I tell my children, don't play this man down. It's a lot of us don't know Arabic. Yeah. But Allah owns your soul. Yeah, that's right. He knows English. <laughs> I'm not trying to say stop learning. Because yes, I study all the time and read all the time. Yes, and I'm so grateful. You know when uh, Brother Farouk was, you know, they saw my brothers always on the scene everywhere. Y'all saw Brother Farouk everywhere packing these bags. I was mad at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always on the scene. But I'm so grateful to Allah. Because he said, I can stay in the house for months and listen to Warwick D. Muhammad. I don't have to come out. Because he was bringing it home. And, I'm, and, I, and, I, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you, because you sisters, these young people coming back. You sisters and brothers going to be, ma'am, cultivate your intellect. Cultivate your potential. Because they have to be busy. That's right. They're not going to always be with you. That's right you know, in the stage, in, in your fiery stages. So you go educate yourself and stuff, because you'll get mad and lonely. And you see, some of you are getting divorces too quick. You don't have any stick to it. You, when you stop liking some hell, when I stopped liking you, G, I went to school. <laughs> So he can look.
look at me. So this, this religion is real. You don't have to be deviant to be genuine. Allah blessed me with my personality. I didn't have to change that. I just had to perfect it and make it moral and correct. But we all have our model mode of education and, and, and communication and important information. So you won't be so angry at other people. When you get bored, you just don't know how many gifts he has put in you. Yes, ma'am. How would that look? What am I, 63 now? At 60 years old, I opened a restaurant. I had stopped cooking for you, Gene. <laughs> the food he's getting now, he's never got. Money makes this power. At first, I was thinking about opening up a little coffee shop in and there. Shoot, Negroes wasn't buying nothing. I had to come up with some meals. <laughs> you know, and, and then, but my spirit was right. And I saw, I, I see my restaurant as a masjid. Because you know if I'm standing up here running my mouth with you, what you think my customers get? <laughs> and, and look here, I, and when, when I first started cooking, I said, Allah, you control the taste of it. My spirit was good. If it doesn't taste good, don't let them know it, because I need them to keep coming. <laughs> yeah, you can ask for favors like that. But what they come from is the spirit. Everybody say, I love the spirit here. Just I love the spirit in your restaurant. And think, so when you blessed with that type of aura, you don't just relax. You go back and refill Because people depending on you They come to me all the time I don't even charge them uh, For advice Marital advice I don't I just want a lot to pay the bill You know Let me pay the rent But uh, I, I, I want to say that Imam Wazir a lot of times I just say why is it? Because we grew up with the young man. Oh. What I like about him is he manifests the same kind of character that I live. Compassion. He's a compassionate young man. Intelligent. He's not a show off. You know, very knowledgeable. And and, and, and we can like the brother said, we can pass to the time. You know. He's patient with old people because you know if he was putting up with Farouk. Because <laughs> Eugene would squeeze a dog, tell the eagle how. <laughs> brother was if you try to make a move and you, Eugene, wait a minute, brother. I'm a minute. I'm <laughs> but they couldn't do it without him. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, and what it is is that you need to study leadership from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. You need to study the wise of the Prophet. Yeah. How patient they were. Yes. Everything is real. They were human beings. Yes. And things. So you, you, I, I, I say to the sisters um, that we have a distinct, we're supposed to be distinct in our character. If you don't look physically external like you look, maybe you need to fit it. But if you're not too wrapped tight, then you might need to put on that uniform like we did in the nation of Islam. And then you grew into that uniform. You understand? So sometimes if you put the clothes on and cover up, cover up your bosom, cover up your butt. Because let me say something, you can get that man with that butt. But when that butt change, he gonna change. <laughs> 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 Am I talking about the ladies? Don't <laughs> Man is mine. You know, back in the middle when the term man is mine came out. When the 
return man as mine came, I was so happy. You know, because we, back then it was all about the man in the nation. He sold so many papers, he wore holes in his suits. <laughs> you know, but what I'm, and all that, and that's a real thing, he really did. The thing is, sisters, is that we got to get that cohesiveness back and that stick to itness. You know, and everybody doesn't have to be here because you know I'm not here 24 7. I work so hard, then I, I, I'm accepting that I, my body's getting old and I don't care. I get my young grandchildren to help me and whatever. But those of you who are here holding it down, educate yourself because that's a burden on the email when the people around him are not educated. Because you have to be responsible and make uh, decisions. You have to be warm enough to tell the sister that it's time for you to get out of that. Because this is called a distraction from select. Yes. 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 I, I, I taught, um, I, I, you know I'm an educator, so when I used to teach middle school kids, little girls come to school and their pants would be so low, you might see their skin. I said, say brother, sister, I said, we're trying to get our tax scores up. My, son, my boys can't concentrate with your behind. I say, this is distracting in, edu in the edu education environment. When I was a counselor, they would come in the office putting their books up in their chest. They loved me to death. They hung around that office. Let me tell you why they love you to death. If you learn the universal language to help people as a Muslim, you must learn the logic of W.D. Muhammad. Yes. Right. Right. So much wisdom. Oh, yeah. So compassionate. Yeah. And Allah will bless you to impart it out of your mold. Yeah. It's the same essence, yeah. but everybody has their own style right. of doing that. And um, I have people come back all the time, especially when I was taught elementary, and they say, Oh, Mr. Farouk, but Dr. Farouk. I remember when you whipped my butt. I was, I was putting my hands on it too. <laughs> I said, you liked it, didn't you? <laughs> they did. They loved my whipping. Um, I want to say that, uh, let me read something on this paper. It might sound good. Uh, I was talking about Imam Wazir's leadership. His leadership is in alignment with the leadership dictated by our holy book, the Quran, by the life of Prophet Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with him and by the visionary leadership of Wardeen Muhammad. The leadership always embraced love, patience, and compassion and sincerity. He's a sincere young man. As we move forward in establishing a community that promotes Islamic culture, and uh, s promotes a healthy life for human beings, we should be ever grateful that Allah is favoring us. But Allah is favoring other people too. Because when I went to Turkey, when I went to Malaysia, uh, everybody had their own tafsir, but it's, it's still going down the same road. Everybody had their own mode <coughs> because of their experiences. You know, so you don't have to try to look, just, you don't have to look like anybody else. It's okay to wear American clothes, but cover up. Mm. And they're making them now where you, you don't have to make skirts anymore. Half of us don't sew like we used to. Because we can go buy the clothes now. So I, I, I just want to say that uh, I'm just so grateful to Allah that my husband and I had that stick to it. And we never had any desire to be in any other community. And we've been in the community since 1972. In fact, Keelan, the young man that did the, I know he was loud as I don't know, but forgive him, uh, did a banquet last night. He was the first child when we came to Tallis Lung. We had, already, we had two. We had been married six years prior to coming to Tallis Lung. The brother mentioned a message to the black man. I gave that message to the black man to Farouk. Because back in the day, we were looking for an identity. In the 60s, back in Ampliot or something. But, uh, I got that book, and Brother Farouk didn't want that book the first time. Then he got it and started trying to throw papers all around for me to read. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, these brothers are something else when they think they're holy. I'm 
sister. They still transforming. <laughs> Um, I'm talking, but I was supposed to be preparing some food for you all. Or we're going to eat after t uh, Talim, I hope. Because I got to go heat up this meat. You know that good meat y'all had the first time? Yeah. I got some more, but I got to go heat it up. And I uh, just took my apron off. Y'all still got us wearing all kind of hats. But as long as you're getting paid, sister, get your money. <laughs> You know, a happy Muslim woman is a woman with money. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And it's not coming from that book, those books. <laughs> May Allah bless us with a good heart, good spirit, love each other. You know, it's enough haters out there. Yeah, so you sisters, I mean, you, it has a lot to do with you too. Yes. You got to create this environment right. 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 And then, and then, when, because I'm telling you, if you know your religious, you keep these brothers from leaving you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. They come up with all this yang yang. Boy, no, this is show from the Quran. I'm telling you, and, and then too. Then you'll know when to leave them alone, because you know we can raise plenty of hell. <laughs> and don't know when to shut up. <laughs> you know, so get your balance together. And uh, so we can help these sisters get with these brothers. And you and, and some enough single sisters around here. I don't know if it's the way you're wearing your headpiece, I don't know what it is. But y'all got to come together and get married so we can have a healthy uh, community. I'd probably talk long as the brother in the white, but may Allah. <laughs> may Allah be pleased with us. Let's be happy in our soul. You understand? And uh, be grateful if you still. I'm grateful to have Brother Farouk. Oh, Allah, I'm so grateful. Because he sure he can wash towels, cook, everything. <laughs> Aslam Laikum. What a intelligent Muslim really is. I don't want to hold up all of the time, so I'm just going to say a portion of what I had in my notes. Our, count, our congressman who spoke, and he. I don't know if he was looking over my shoulders or I was looking over his, but one of his comments struck me and set my mind to something that I had written in the notes for a presentation about uh, what he saw occurring here and what went to my mind in terms of occurring here. I had in my notes this that God sometimes knocks down a thing by way of nature. And sometimes we hate to see it, but in time, something better and more beautiful takes its place. He'll send hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, if you're in Africa, on, on the plains there and it looks so the growth is so beautiful there and then the rains come and cover it up and it looks desolate but after the waters recede then you see life coming back in that very spot where Allah sent something to knock down what is already there years ago the wind hit this structure that was standing here we didn't want to look at it oh I don't want to see this that building that was a temple and then converted into a mosque and Allah sent a strong wind against it it was hard for us to look at I don't want to see this what has happened to this structure? 
But look now at what God gave us to see in his place. This wonderful, beautiful structure. And knowing Imam Wazir and the hard workers that we have here, the first one they are going to contribute the success of this endeavor to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's who they're going to give the credit to and built this wonderful masjid here. And did I hear correctly? They're saying that it stands on the, the foundation that was here before I didn't take up that, that was an intelligent move I mean that was an intelligent move but when I was listening to that my mind then went to someplace else that okay yeah they used that foundation but the real foundation is the faith and the hope and the hard work of the believers here and the vision of Imam W.D. Muhammad who told Carson who told the rest tear it down build a masjid and here maybe years later but here it is and we're in it and Allah has rewarded us and blessed us with this facility this great facility here and we are so in and our heart is so overjoyed with the success of the community here and in this endeavor and our, our Imam Wazi Ali and others who have spoken you know we, we, we are so uh, Imam from Charlotte he quoted Goins in a race towards all that is good said he was racing with Atlanta you know and, 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 and good luck <laughs> 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 but but we, we love it. We've been to the masjid there, a beautiful masjid that they themselves built. The imam, he taught us, he said that the two major functions of the masjid is sajda and education. That masjid takes its name from the very same word that gives us sajda. Sajda, prostration, religious devotions, and education. In Atlanta, Georgia, Allah has blessed us to have the W.D. Muhammad High School. With an enormous focus on education. With, with our alumni from our school in going to some of America's most prestigious universities, graduating from those universities with degree after degree, coming back, contributing to the community in which we reside. I mean, our focus has been education. You heard from me, ma'am, Tariq. He's an alumni of W.D. Muhammad High School. And the two imams now in Atlanta, Imam Mansour Zabri, Imam Suleiman Hamid, they are alumni of W.D. Muhammad High School. And the imam, he said, he, the imam from Charlotte goes in a race towards all that is good. We've been in that race. Myself, Imam Pleman Tawheed al -Amin, others who have given a, a, a lifetime to, the, to this race, and, and we see it as a um, relay race. And we've been running and running and running, and we've been holding the baton back there. Nobody has ever grabbed it, and we've just been running and running and running, and now some have come up and grabbed the baton, and we let it go to them, and zoom, and we look at these young men, these young men, and man, we are so pleased with what we're seeing and hearing from them, and the things that they are structuring, the Islamic studies classes in the masjid for the children, going after the children in public schools schools and giving them an opportunity to come though they're not in our school in public schools to learn the re to, to learn the religion getting ready for Ramadan they have made arrangements for a hafiz of Quran to come to Atlanta during the month of Ramadan in Atlanta Masjid the whole Quran will be recited in the prayers these young these young imams are doing some wonderful and marvelous things and we are so appreciative of of all all of them. Uh, Imam Safi Arab, a second. Oh man. 
Oh man, the wonderful things being done in Baltimore. I'm telling you, our hearts can, can feel and rest with great comfort that what we see rising up in our community to take it to the next level. God willing, man, we're going to see some wonderful things. Joma and Atlanta, we got three or four hundred young adults, man. Attending Juma on their own. Their parents are not bringing them. They are coming on their own. Allahu Akbar, man. Allahu Akbar. And we love that. Many of us know something of the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his migration from Mecca to Medina where he and his followers built the Islamic community life in its best formation. Just briefly, Prophet Muhammad had to leave Mecca, you know that, going to Medina. And he and his traveling companion in the Hijra, they had to take, in order to get to Medina, what is called in the history the untrodden path towards their destination. And it was hard travel. But they were unfazed by fatigue or hardship. I think this message here reflects that of the imam and the members of the community. Unfazed by the fatigue and the hardship an endeavor like this brings upon us. Starting out with, I think you said $60,000 needing four hundred and fifty four and sixty thousand dollars uh, most most folks would just say oh, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> the prophet and his companion they had to cross mountains desert the desert glaring with heat it's been hot here this weekend especially when we were out there on the tent but my last cut by in atlanta that i gave i told him well one thing for sure it's not hot as hell. <laughs> and so, yes, it was hot, but it's not as hot as hell. The prophet and his companion, their consolation was faith, patience, and trust in God. I see that reflected in this structure. As they neared Medina, who was the first to announce the prophets that the prophet was nearby, it was a Jew, not with anger not with regret but he was the first one to recognize or know that the prophet was near that puts in the mind that our imam W.D. Muhammad you know he was he traveled a lot and not just here in America but all over the world and he was over there in Israel you know and he got off the plane and took him to his hotel and within 10 or 15 minutes a rabbi was calling him, knowing that he was there in their land, in their land, in their society. But this rabbi was a was a friend of the Imam in our community. Prophet Muhammad, and this is really the part of the hijra I want to present before I conclude. He let his camel walk free into Medina, and the camel went side to side with Muhammad the prophet and they say giving everybody an opportunity to see him up close all of those who had invited him to come to Medina so his camel was moving him side to side so the people on this side and the people on that side could get a glimpse of him where his camel stopped is where he built his masjid. And in building that masjid, he worked with his own hands along with the followers, the believers, with his own hand. We hear, I think it was his wife or someone mentioning Amen Wazir and late hours he spent and so much work to do and a community working together to build this structure. That's a wonderful thing in Atlanta. 
our focus was on the education. We built the W.D. Muhammad High School. There was a place across the street they used to call Little Vietnam. It was so dangerous where African Americans was living. And they were going to tear that place down. And they had a community center there. Had a gymnasium and a whole bunch of other things in it. And so Amen Pleman, he went uh, to the owners or the one who were planning the build and said, what are you going to do with that? And they said, we're going to tear it down. And he asked them, well, can we, uh, can we take it apart and move it to our facility? And the man said, you think you can do that? They were just going to bulldoze it. And so he said, if y'all think y'all can do that, we well, go ahead. So we have a Muslim brother in Atlanta, a member of our community. He owns a firm. He builds all around the world, over in the Middle East and other places, that he has built enormous structure. He brought his crew to that site and brick by brick they took that building apart. They took up the floor of the gymnasium. They moved those bricks and that the, the, the flooring to our site and for we reassembled those bricks. They got maybe 60 percent, 50 or 60 percent of the bricks. We put it into the new structure. We added it. We put that, that floor down Everything in that construction was done by members of our community except the iron that had to be erected. But everything else, the plumbing, the, the carpentry, the, the, the flooring, everything in that structure was done by members of the community. And just as we see in this wonderful structure here, when completed, when the prophet Prayers and peace be upon him. Completed the masjid and moved into his connected living quarters. And he began thinking of the new life. The wide gate that it opened for his mission. We see this masjid as a wide gate for future endeavors here in Houston, Texas. And even further, from that masjid, Prophet Muhammad prays in peace be upon him. He established many important aspects of community life. And one of the important ones was the right to worship on equal footing with those of other faiths. We call it religious freedom here in this land. He established freedom of religion and thought and freedom of opinion and the inviolability of the town or the city, inviolability of the human life and the personal property, and the reduction of crime, and establishing the economic life, educational life, and the political life for his community at that time. We see the supports for these coming from this message here in Houston. Many years ago, I was sent to Atlanta by Imam W. D. Muhammad. And on one of his early trips there, while I, uh, th there, and early on in his ministry, we were riding in the car, and he said to me, he started telling me the story of Abraham and the four birds. You know, and he told me, uh, oh, he related to me those verses of the Quran. He didn't say a whole lot more about it while we were riding in the car. But in the weeks to come, he explained those birds as aspirations. And here we sit in uh, a structure that re represents one of the big and best aspirations of the community here. May Allah reward you for this endeavor. And this, this, this structure, this building, and what it represents. The prophet, he took a sign from his camel where to build his mosque. He let his camel move freely, and where it stopped is where he built his mosque. Allah says in the Quran, do they not consider the camel and how it was created? When Allah says, that, when I read things like this in the Quran, I, 
I, something tells me, well, I need to, okay, I need to look at how the camel is created. And some of us have heard the ma'am talk about it uh, on other occasions, about, about the camel being a symbol of our circumspection. And I want to add to that this. When you study the camel, a camel has been entrusted with service to humanity. It was your circumspection that led you to do this. A camel has been entrusted with service to humanity. We drink its milk, eat its flesh, clothe ourselves with its hide, and it carries our heavy burdens, and it gives us transportation. A community service is that animal. And it was assigned to Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, where to build his masjid, and what was to come from that masjid once it was established. A masjid designed with community service in mind. And that's our masjids have to be more than just a place of comfort for us and our prayers, but it has to serve the broader community. The camel, it produces its own vitamins. Science says. Other creatures, they eat something to get their vitamins. But a camel produces its own vitamins. I would say for this event and, and, and for this point and moment in this history, the vitamins that our community has enjoyed here has been faith and trust, message of Quran and our responsibility, the uswa of Muhammad the Prophet, and the vision of Imam W.D. Muhammad. That's been the vitamins for making this occur. The camel is herbivorous. It, it means don't eat meat. But look, when I say it's a community servant animal, it don't eat meat. But it's not found in a forest where all these trees and leaves and things, it's not found in the forest. Where is it found? In a desert. It's found in a desert where they got very few trees. It's there to, as a servant of the human being as we should be servants of those whom Allah has opened up our hearts to this religion to serve the needs of the whole humanity. And a camel can eat the needles of a cacti. And I, and Imam, he don't have to tell me. I've been involved in it myself. A lot of needles, man. He ain't got to tell me. I, I mean, I know it. I mean, I, 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 I've had so many needles stuck in me over the years. I feel like a porcupine. <laughs> but what benefit, what helps is when that happened, then I go home to my Zouj and Farida. I got all these needles in me. And Farida start pulling the needles out. Oh my, what 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 happened? Oh, let me oh let me. Oh, take this needle out. Oh, take that needle out. <laughs> then turn right around and put it on the plate. Yeah, well, your cut bars are too long. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and what I have learned to do, brother Imams and others here, and you get all these needles, I mean, turn around and eat them and let them give you some energy and vitamins, man, to make this thing continue to happen so that we can be pleased, pleasing to our, to our Lord. We had to eat a lot of needles here, government regulations. I know it. I know it, trying to get permits and things to do this, doubts. A camel never forgets what it sees. It is sensitive and submissive. Our history here is rich. 
at this masjid. You had I met one of the ministers here. Don't hear a lot a lot about him named Raymond. Ben Carson know him, know him well, know him well. He was in Chicago. He and I was in an automobile accident. Automobile laid up in in, in a hospital in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We were on our way to see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad off. We didn't make it. We had an accident and some of us got hurt in the van. We were in a hospital in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. They didn't have anybody black in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So all the doctors was white and all of the nurses was white and we were calling the white folks the devil and those nurses was taking such good care of us. I had to rethink that expression. <laughs> And them nurses was doing such good things for us. And, I mean, and looking after our needs. I'm, I'm laying there. And man, I've been calling these people uh, the devil. And, uh, I, I got to rethink this. You know, and they just, just try on oh, bringing stuff. But one thing I, I had to know, they brought some food. I didn't know what it was. And yeah, you got to eat. This is good for you. What is it? I can't just eat something. I don't know what it is. This is good. Man. They are mountain oysters. <laughs> now, I didn't know what mountain oysters was either, but I no, I, I don't want no mountain oysters. <laughs> and so, after that, after that journey, asked Imam Qasim Ahmed, who was a lieutenant then, but asking uh, about our conversations, even, and I was first lieutenant too, probably a good one, but I asked him about our conversations about white folks and, and white folks being the devil. Ask him about our conversations and, oh brother lieutenant, you're so, you're talking to me, you're so, you're so, oh, oh how come you, we want white man the devil? I said, no, we, you know, our language should be about building, constructing, advancing the community. Not so much the white man is the devil. Oh, brother lieutenant. I say, well, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you say the white man is the devil. And the black man is God. White man is the devil and you are God. And you can't go to California. And the white man has stepped foot on the moon. <laughs> how, can you have, how can you have that thinking in mind? But I was so far away from the language of Imam W.D. Muhammad, had to learn it. Now, I have to say, Imam Qasim Ahmed was, he was probably foremost in, in learning the language of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Most people don't know this. In the Nation of Islam days, even. In the Nation of Islam days, I had to sometimes caution him just to keep him from being excommunicated. <laughs> I did. The imam had been excommunicated, and Kasim would listen to his talks and bring on the radio and bring information and bring Islamic studies, literature, and stuff. I had Kasim, Kasim, you got to read that at home, not here on the job. <laughs> and to keep him from being excommunicated. But he's always been a, a, a great student of Imam W.D. Muhammad, and Allah has rewarded him and blessed him. As all of us, many of us, have seen ourselves and con continue to see ourselves as a student of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Finally, some final thought. I had a lot more, but I know the time. A camel knows how to make it in the desert. It knows how to reach the oasis. From 1930, in the wilderness of North America, our camel has moved and moved and traveled and made it to this oasis, Masjid Awaruthuddin Muhammad. We have come a long ways. Allah has rewarded us. Our camel has moved us forward. Circumspection and our learning and a good sense to study under our leader, Imam Waratuddin Muhammad. The camel can close his nose 
in a sandstorm. That's how it survives. It, it, it can close its nostrils to keep sand from getting in. I remember when I was a youngster, we used to talk about fellows who seen the young girls and the ladies and stuff, and we would say, she got his nose open. <laughs> well, you better know how to close your nose <laughs> when it's ne necessary to be closed. But sometimes it happened. It happened to me. <laughs> Farida Bacha, I got my nose open, man. <laughs> I mean, she did. I mean, but it, it, it wasn't just because the looks, the looks was there too, but at the Nation of Islam, you, you could look, but don't touch. But had my, she got my nose open there, but because of the fact she was, she was working in our community, laboring in our community, she was treasurer, secretary, treasurer at, at our masjid, attending every meeting that we had, were having Sundays and Wednesdays and Friday nights, serving the cause of, uh, of, of, of this religion. And I'm, just, I'm looking at this beautiful woman serving the cause of African Americans in, in here, and I guess she was looking at, at, at me in the same way. Our first lieutenant, circulation manager, Muhammad Speak newspaper, had in, having to move pounds and thousands of pounds of fish. I'm working and so she said, look at him. He got some broad shoulders. Man. Maybe that man can do something for me and we've done so much for each other and man, I know in this society delicious looking drinks you better know how to close your nose. Feel good stuff. Drugs. You better know how to close your nose. The whispers into your hearts and mind. You better know how to close your nose. Thongs. You better know how to close your nose. <laughs> because if you don't know how to close your nose when it needs to be closed, you're in a world of trouble. And this world will put trouble on you. But you sisters who got husbands, got problems like that, just tire him out so he can't do nothing else <laughs> and go no place else. Just tire him out. Just, yeah. I need this, I need this, I need this, you want this, give me that, you want that, give me that. Look good for him and clean and upright and decent and, and you know, and I, I, man, oh man, I, I got one in my household, my wife. You know, and I am man, 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 oh man, this edifice, as I conclude. Again, the masjid, most important function is sajda, from which the name masjid comes, and education. Those two things. We look forward to that, a lot of that coming from Masjid Waraduddin Muhammad. We know, and it, it, be, it's, it has begun a long time ago. We've been hearing the wonderful things that uh, Imam here is doing with the young folks and educating them and, and teaching them. We are working in the same line of spirit to build models of neighborhood life and here in Houston we are making some marvelous progress we want to see a material change the imam says in the landscape of African American Muslims in association with him he taught us a long time ago of the value and the need to put your presence on the landscape and here we are, Belfort Avenue. Our presence is on this landscape with plans to enlarge the visibility of us as a community here, the Atlanta Masjid, all of its members and its leadership. We congratulate Imam Wazi Ali and the Muslim community here 
we treasure this, we love this. I mean, and, and we are on, on point. We are prepared to move our community forward. And we, again, uh, have to keep saying this. We love our young members coming up. And I'm telling you, we're passing the baton. Now, I can still run, though. <laughs> I want that long now. I can still run. And I can still carry the baton. I haven't, been, I haven't stopped that. I can still do it. But I'd like to, here, take this and let me stand on the sideline and watch the speed of these young Muslim students of Imam W.D. Muhammad do these marvelous things in, in, in our cities. Oh, man, we got to encourage it. We got to promote it. They should be, as the Imam said, be working alongside of us while we are still productive and active so that when we are gone then they can step up into the driver's seat and move this community to its next destination as a community and next destination as a community and we've got to do that they have to now do this with their children with their children thank you very much assalamu alaikum Thank you very much, Imam Ibrahim. So we're going to conclude, and uh, just want to apologize. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to everyone to uh, provide comments because as time is limited, and we know that the legacy of Imam W. D. Muhammad is so much so that it's it, it's impossible for everyone to get up and just share everything that what Imam W. D. Muhammad meant to them, and in, in, in influencing them, and encouraging, and providing wisdom. Uh, so with that, we're going to conclude a uh, few announcements I would, would like to make that we're going to pray Duha at 1.20 p.m. And uh, please support the vendors uh, outside in the tent. And also, as uh, Imam Ibrahim was saying, we want to expand this vision. We want to, to uh, 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 go beyond the, the boundaries of these streets and go out into the community and do the things that Imam W.D. Muhammad uh, 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 encouraged us to do. And uh, one quote that he uh, I always remember that he, he would say was, life is best established and protected when life lives with life in a context with other members of that life. And I believe that this is the context here in Houston, in Atlanta, in Charlotte, New York, and all over the city where you have the people that came up and spoke today so eloquently and so intelligently and provided us with so much wisdom. Anywhere you go, you have students of Imam W.D. Muhammad. You have that context where that life can thrive and be protected. And that is what we want to always support. And in saying that, right, he reminded me we're not concluding, we're concluding the Talim. We do have the public address at 1.30 after we make the Salat. So um, I would just want to encourage everyone to support the effort for us to retire the debt on this building so we can begin to build the expansion of the community center, the Imam Wadifuddin Muhammad Community Center. As we have the uh, forums outside, so on your way, uh, coming in from getting your food or supporting the vendors or, or, or making a salat, please stop by the station and, and pick up the forms and, and, and help us retire this debt. And inshallah, as we go across the cities of the United States of America and beyond internationally, we will support the other efforts to make similar situations like this happen. So I would like to end with a dua, and it's one that Imam Muhammad gave us. Oh Allah, I cannot manage this life myself without you. Please make of my life what you want it to be, what you prefer it to be. Do not allow me to act on my own. Bless me to act only in accordance with your will. We hear and we obey. We ask for your forgiveness. Please forgive us. Amin. Assalamu alaikum.